Allah will not ask me on the day of judgment is Osama bin Laden a terrorist or not. That is not my basis to pass the examination. That do you agree Saddam Hussein is a terrorist or not? Anything which contradicts the way of Rasulullah is wrong. Anything which contradicts the Quran of any of the other scriptures is wrong. The Quran is 100% the word of Allah. Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips. Everything else was martyr, it's clear, it's false, and we call to that truth. This is the truth. Muslim living in any part of the world, he is our brother. We should feel for him. Muslims are suffering. Muslims are butchered. Muslims are slain. And some of us even, they don't feel, they don't cry over that. Salim Al-Amri. If one organ is in pain, the whole body feels that. Whether he's in India, whether he's in Far East, whether he's wherever the Muslim is, he is my brother. I should feel for him. This book, this book, people, they should know about it. Our strength is sight. This is the proof, the irrefutable proof, the irrefutable evidence. This Quran chained the Arabs. It's very powerful because it's the word of Allah. If all Muslims hold to this robe of Allah, no power, no force on earth can do anything to us, O oh, Ummah of the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam Humanity is suffering People are suffering Humanity is in the darkness People are in need for someone to show them the way out. And we Muslims know the way. It has been given to us. It is this book. It is the Quran. It's the word of Allah. It's the last guidance that Allah sent for man. Every Muslim knows that. It is this book. 
to let the people to know about it. To read it. To convey what is inside it. The early Muslims, they understood and they realized the importance of conveying the message in this book and sharing the guidance that it contains and spread it to those who are in the dark. All of you, they know, or most of you know, what the Prophet ﷺ said on the Mount of Arafat. Those who are present should take the message to those who are absent. The companions, they understood the message and they took this light. This book, brothers and sisters, is the solution for all the problems of humanity. People, they should know about it. This is the proof, the irrefutable proof, the irrefutable evidence about the messengership and prophethood of Muhammad If anyone comes and says, what is the evidence? What is the proof that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Say this book. The Jews cannot produce to us the miracles of Musa alayhi salam. They cannot replay to us the Passover and the split of the sea. That miracle happened. We believe in it. It happened. But it cannot be reproduced. Only those who happen to be in the company of Moses witnessed it and saw it. The same thing, the Christians cannot reduce all the miracles which Isa, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, peace and blessings be upon him and upon his mother, upon all the prophets of Allah who preceded him and upon our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They cannot reduce all the miracles that he healed the blind and the livers and all these things. Because these were momentary, happened and, and finished, and that's it. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is not an exception. He performed so many miracles, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So many. Very great miracles. I'll just mention a few of them. But the greatest miracle is this one, which is still exists. The Prophet وسلم, the water, the water gushed from his fingers. There was scarcity of water. And the Prophet وسلم, he, brought, he told them, give me a small pot. And he put his hand in it. And the water started gushing out. His hand became like water taps. And the water coming out. And the Sahaba, they saw that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is one of his miracles. In the masjid, he used to give the khutbah standing on the ground, on the floor, leaning against a piece of wood, a trunk of a tree, leaning against it. And then they built for him the mimbar, the pulpit. And the first khutbah he gave the trunk of the tree started crying and everyone in the masjid heard the cry of the trunk. The trunk was crying like a child till the Prophet ﷺ came down and hugged the trunk. And then the trunk became quiet.
one of the companions came to the Prophet Sallallahu carrying his eye on his palm. His eye fell off. Say, see, O Prophet of Allah. He said, don't worry. He put it back. And this eye became stronger than the other one. So the Prophet Sallallahu he performed many miracles. But the greatest miracle is this book. The Quran. This book changed and transformed the life of the Arabs before Islam. The Arabs before Islam, they were dead nation. Neglected. No one knows anything about them. Fighting one another before Islam. They would fight one another for this for silly reasons. Some of the battles that happened between the Arabs before Islam lasted for years. And if you ask and you want to know the reason, it is very silly. One of the famous battles is Dahis and Al Ghabra. Dahis and Al Ghabra. You know what Dahis and Al Ghabra? Names of two horses. Two horses. They were in the race, and one horse won the race. And one horse belongs to the Bian, and the other horse belongs to Abs, two tribes. And the war started. And hundreds and hundreds of people were killed. Another famous battle is the battle of Al Basus. What is Al Basus? It's the Sheikh Hamel. Again. So that was the situation of the Arabs. They were alcoholic before Islam, most of them. Eating the dead animals, worshipping idols, burying their daughters alive, drinking blood. All these ills they had before Islam. And this book changed their life. They were barbaric tribes. They became the most civilized people on earth. And all of you know that when the Prophet Sallallahu he sent his ambassador to the king of Persia, Kisra or Kosra. You know what the king of Persia said? Oh, what brought you? Why did you come? You want wheat? You want flour? You want date? Because that's what normally you Arabs come from, for. But this time, the ambassador said, No, 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 Rustam. He's talking to the commander. No, Rustam. نحن قوم ابتعثنا الله لنخرج العباد من عبادة العباد إلى عبادة رب العباد ومن ضيق الدنيا إلى ساعة الآخرة ومن يور الأديان إلى عدل الإسلام ربعي سيد ابن عامر سيد رستم what you are saying yes that was before we used to be like that but today we are not the same people whom you knew before we are people are raised, born again, okay? We are raised by Allah to bring out the people from worshipping one another to the worship of the creator of man, creator of the heavens and the earth. <laughs> The Salah is the most important pillar of Islam after Iman, after faith. Indeed, successful are the believers, those who pray with humility and attentiveness. You have no excuse for missing a Salah. If you can't stand, pray while sitting. If you can't sit, pray while lying on your sides. You can even pray with Ishara, with just indication. But offering salah is compulsory. There's no excuse for you to miss your salah. Salah, the programming towards righteousness. 
Dr. Zakir Naik speaks on Salah, the programming towards righteousness in Truth Exposed. The Holy Quran and modern science, whether they conflict or conciliate, the Holy Quran describes the exact geospherical earth 1400 years ago. Most of the things which the Quran speaks about embryology is matching with the latest discoveries made in the field of embryology. The Quran speaks about the rotation and the revolution of the sun 1400 years ago, which science has discovered today. The Quran is not outdated, it is up to date. Dr. Zakir Naik speaks on Quran and modern science, conflict or conciliation in Truth Exposed. What is your duty to yourself is written in the Quran. What is your duty towards your parent is duty in, is written in the Quran. What is your responsibility between you and the Prophet is in the Quran. What is the response between you and fellow mankind is in the Quran. Everything is written in the Quran. It is a sin for all Muslims who do not share the Quran with your friend who are not yet Muslim. <laughs> That all Muslims believe in the one and same Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All Muslims believe in the final and same messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quran, it is the last revelation of Allah. Allah himself said, right, I'll take care of preserving it myself. I would not entrust it to anyone. Dr. Jamal Badawi. A day when no wealth or children would be of any help except those who come to Allah with a clean heart because after all we came from the dust and to dust we are returning and from the the narrowness of this mundane and worldly life to the vastness of the hereafter and from the tyranny and the oppression of man-made religions to the justice of Islam. These beautiful words came out from the mouth of Rabi because he was a comp another person, completely different. Islam chained him. So the topic, O oh, Ummah of the Quran, this Quran chained the Arabs. And they got rid of all these ills. And they softened. The Prophet ﷺ, the same Arabs, before the, the Prophet ﷺ, before Islam, they were alcoholic, eating the dead animals, burying their daughters alive. The same Arabs, they are saying, the Prophet ﷺ gave us a nice mawida, exhortation, a speech, a moving speech that our hearts were leaping, jumping out from their place. And the, our eyes started shedding tears. So we felt that the Prophet ﷺ is telling us goodbye. You see how softened their hearts became? What softened their heart? What softened the hard hearts of the companions? This book. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu all of you know that how he became a Muslim. He was looking to kill the Prophet ﷺ. This book chained him. The seerah, in his biography we read, they said he had two black lines on his face. Umar. Two black lines on his cheeks. Why? Because of his constant crying. There were two canals, two grooves, two traces, dark lines of the tears on his cheek. How softened his heart became, very soft. If you say to Umar, fear Allah, ya Umar, he falls down on his knees. It is this book that chained Umar ibn Khattab. Now, where is the chain in our life? This book, Allah said, had he revealed it or sent it down upon a mountain, that mountain would have crumbled down. 
لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله If this book is sent down upon a mountain this mountain will crumble turn into powder but our hearts today are very very hard and we read it and we don't cry we read it for baraka we put it in the car to protect the car from the thieves we put it under the head of the child but do we follow what is inside as one of our mashayikh said you go you find a muslim selling haram and you see quranic ayah this is from the bounties and blessings of my lord and then another ayah this is typical selective choose those i was were selected this is by default but anyway if you are grateful i will increase you see increase you what another branch another shop that's what he wants if you are grateful then i'll have another shop a third shop a series of shops or we read the quran when somebody died not only this brothers and sisters can you imagine that the Quran became an, an evil omen in the life of Muslims? You know, evil omen. You know, it is shirk, of course. If you, you know, the owl, if you see the owl, you say, oh, if the owl landed in someone's house, oh my God, somebody's going to die. See? So that's evil omen. Or if someone, his eye is flickering, you know, a nerve is flickering, so, oh my God, something is going to happen. Evil omens. The Quran became an evil omen now in the life of Muslims. Maybe you don't have this here, but we have it in the Arab world. You know, in the Arab world, broadcasting, television, they start in the beginning with the Quran. A sheikh will recite for barakah. But immediately after the recitation, there will be music immediately. It will be followed with music after that. And before closing down the programs, before the shutdown, also Quran. So in the beginning and the end Quran, in between, anything. Everything to please the shaitan. So people are programmed mentally that you hear the Quran at this time and this time. Any time in between, if you hear the Quran, that means someone died. And this one who died must be a president, a ruler, someone important, not any, any man. So immediately, if the Quran and the television say, A'udhu Billah, what happened? Who died? Who died? It became an evil omen, the Quran, in the life of Muslims. And because of this, brothers and sisters, this ummah is humiliated. We are humiliated. We are over one billion but we are weightless like the froth like the scum we have no weight why we deserted this book we neglected this book when we know that this book it's the one who chained the people our strength inside if we want to gain back our glory and the might is we have to come back here to the book of Allah the Prophet Sallallahu said I left two things among you the book of Allah and my Sunnah if you hold them adhere yourself to them abide by their teachings you will never go astray till you meet me on the fountain the Kawthar this Quran is the word of Allah. Allah spoke it. And it will go back to Allah. You know this? Do you know brothers and sisters? Towards the end of time, people will get up in the morning and they will not find anything inside. Nothing. Blank. 
not only from the book and also to be taken out from the hearts from the breasts it will go back to Allah it's the only book brothers and sisters have you ever found a book challenges its reader have you ever found a book it is challenging the reader it is telling the reader it tells the reader go and find any mistake I challenge you have you found a book like that no way this book yes challenges the reader it says go and try to find any mistake because you will never find because the one who speaks is Allah Azza wa Jal. any other book you'll read in the introduction in the preface you'll see the 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 author or the writer is apologizing huh, in advance and then you see the second revised version second edition third edition fourth edition he keeps revising because he, he there, were, there were many mistakes this book is only one travel anywhere you will never find any mistake any copy subhanallah so this is the robe of Allah we have to hold to it as Allah subhanahu is saying stick and and hold to the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if all Muslims hold to this robe of Allah no power no force on earth can do anything to us I mean it that's what Allah promised and this deen Islam is going to supersede is going to prevail with us or without us if we don't do the job Allah will replace us substitute us with other who will do the job but this Deen is going to reach every corner as Allah promised that he sent his prophet with Huda guidance and the religion of truth to make it supersede prevail upon any other system and other deed and other belief even the rejectors of truth they don't like it this deen will spread with us or without us imagine now because this book has self strength it's very powerful because it's the word of Allah someone is reading it and you don't know you don't know Arabic but you cry there is a hidden force magnetic force inside he's Ajami he doesn't know Arabic but when the Quran is recited you will find him like this and maybe he's crying though he doesn't know what is it this is the impact of the Quran imagine if you know the Arabic language because it's the word of Allah the Arabs before Islam in the morning they would be saying to one another Abu Jahal and Abu Lahab oh this is the words of the sorcerer magician at night they go and start listening to him you know this in the morning Abu Jahal Abu Sufyan saying to the Prophet you are magician you are sorcerer you are witch doctor etc but at night the Prophet Sallallahu is praying in the masjid they go and start listening all the media is playing games 50 year old Muslim Arab married a 16 year old girl but when a 50 year old non-Muslim rapes a 6 year old girl it comes in news briefs today the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. Watch Dr. Zakir Naik. Before the Americans came to Iraq, there was no suicide bombing. After the Americans came, then suicide bombing. People worry that one day new weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs. They fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. It fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Islam is destined to supersede all. This religion of peace, this religion of haq, will supersede all the other ways of life. And enough is Allah's witness. Media and Islam, war or peace?
what were the teachings of the Prophet upon him? What did it revolve around? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was the greatest liberator that humanity has ever known, that humanity will ever know. Yasir Fazaga. Without a standing army, without a bodyguard, without a palace, without a fixed revenue, if ever any man had the right to say that he ruled by the right divine, it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I just wanted to ask Dr. Naik. My question is, idol worship is the greatest sin in Islam. Christ was the son of God. Is it a question of killing Muslims? I'm sort of confused. And what is the best way to answer them? There is a case for supremacy. And sorry, secondly, I'm fighting them. Somehow um, bring blasphemy. Of one religion against another. What advice can you give? Who created God? That's my question, thank you. Don't hesitate. Question Dr. Zakir Nayak in Dare to Ask. This book. This book, people, they should know about it. Our strength inside. This is the proof. The irrefutable proof. The irrefutable evidence. This Quran chained. The Arabs, it's very powerful because the word of Allah, if all Muslims hold to this robe of Allah, no power, no force on earth can do anything to us, O oh, Ummah of the Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hadihi. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Inna hu man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah. Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the robe of Allah. We have to hold to it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Stick and, and hold to the robe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If all Muslims hold to this robe of Allah, no power, no force on earth can do anything to us. I mean it. That's what Allah promised. And this deen, Islam, is going to supersede. It's going to prevail with us or without us. If we don't do the job, Allah will replace us, substitute us with others who will do the job. But this deen is going to reach every corner, as Allah promised. That He sent His Prophet with Huda guidance and the religion of truth to make it supersede, prevail upon any other system, any other deen, any other belief. Even the rejectors of truth, they don't like it. This deen will spread with us or without us. Imagine now, because this book has self strength it's very powerful because the word of allah someone is reading it and you don't know you don't know arabic but you cry there is a hidden force magnetic force inside he's ajami he doesn't know arabic but when the quran is recited you'll find him like this 
and maybe he's crying though he doesn't know what is it this is the impact of the Quran imagine if you know the Arabic language because it's the word of Allah the Arabs before Islam in the morning they would be saying to one another Abu Jahal and Abu Lahab oh this is the words of the sorcerer magician at night they go and start listening to him you know this in the morning Abu Jahal Abu Sufyan saying to the Prophet you are magician you are sorcerer you are witch doctor etc but at night the Prophet Sallallahu is praying in the masjid they go and start listening and many times Abu Sufyan when he became a Muslim this happened between Abu Sufyan and Abu Jahal he said many times we ran into one another at night I am taking a corner listening to the Quran because it moves them and Abu Jahl in the other corner and we don't know just because we are afraid the day is going to break so we have to run because if the people see us what are you doing here guys in the morning you are telling us he's a magician now you are listening to him so they ran many times what are you doing what are you doing so promise me that you will not come the next night see and they promise one another and everyone would think he promised me he would not come okay and they came again and again and again why there is something attracted attracting them don't you know brothers and sisters that in the early days of the da'wah what was the jihad reading the Quran that's it jihad kabira. yes read it that's it read the Quran that's it because this is the book of Allah so this is the robe we have to abide to it in this book Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he asked the Muslims two things only two things which we can do in Surah Ali Imran Surah number three Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying وَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْعًا Two things Allah demanded and requested. That if you are patient, facing in the face of adversities, تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا And in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, saying said, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اصْبِرُوا وَتْ وَصَابِرُوا you should you Muslim you should be patient and also your patience should overcome the patience of your enemy that means we should have more sabr than the sabr and the patience of our enemies we should not lose patience we have to be more patient than your enemy before Islam there was a famous hero knight fighter He's known as Antar bin Shaddad. Okay. So one man asked him, How do you defeat men? How do you knock them down? How do you defeat men? He said, So what is the, the secret behind your strength? He said, You want to know? He said, Yes. He said, Put your finger in my mouth, I'll put my finger in your, and you bite my finger, and I will be biting your finger. So let us do it. You bite my finger, I'll be biting your finger. And they started biting one's finger. Everyone is biting. And then the man said, I started to cry. He said, I defeated the men by this. Had you waited a few minutes, I would cry. But you didn't. It is the sabr. It is the sabr. It's a matter of sabr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, in tasbiru wa tattaqu. If you have sabr and taqwa, la yadurrukum kayduhum shay'a. Their conspiracies, their plottings, their plans, whatever they do, it will never harm you. I know what they are doing. And they, all their plots will be, will fail. Yes, yes. All the plots will fail. Allah protects us. He is the protector. La ta'akhudhu sinatun wa la We sleep. Does he sleep? He's watching. You are planning and plotting and... But Allah is watching. He's the protector. But he needs two things. He asks us two things. 
Not his, he's not a need, he demanded two things, sabr and taqwa. And the beautiful hadith that this is the, the way, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he drew a straight line and the shortcuts. The shortcuts. So the way of salvation is only one way. And it is that straight path. And if you want to be, remain on that straight path, stick to this book. And the shortcuts, they will take you to a hellfire. So the way to the truth is only one way. And it is, is it short or long? Long. Very long. And many of us are not patient. It's a long way. But it is the only way that will take you to the Jannah. And you know something else? Other Muslims, some Muslims, may Allah guide them. The Prophet ﷺ, I want you always to remember this. Always, eh? The Prophet ﷺ, he did like that. And those guys, may Allah guide them. You see here, the Prophet ﷺ, he drew a straight line, right? And the shortcut is say, every shortcut takes you to hell. And those guys are saying, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, the way to the truth is only one way. Those guys are saying the truth is in the center of the circle. In the center of the circle. So I'm asking you, many of you studied mathematics. How many ways to reach the center of the circle? Please tell me. How many ways to reach the center of the circle? As many points on the circumference. From any point on the circumference of the circle, I will reach the center. And that is exactly what they are saying. The way to the truth, as many as these breath of human beings. That's what they're saying. So all the ways lead to Jahannam. Hmm? Only one way leads to the Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ drew this and will tell them, you are telling us this. Whom should we believe now? Whom should we follow? So the way to the Jannah, it's through this book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet وسلم, in this hadith, which is authentic hadith and Musnad Ahmad and Al-Hakim and Sahih Sunan and Nasai, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Inna hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lillati hiya aqwa mu yubashir al-mu'mineen. Verily, this book, Qur'an, guides to that which is the most right and, and gives the glad tidings to the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, La yaatihi al-baatul min bayni yadayhi wa la min khalfah. No falsehood can approach it from before or behind it. Now, what is our obligation? What are our obligations as Muslims towards this book? As I said, brothers and sisters, many of us have abandoned this book, neglected this book, deserted the book of Allah. It is true. I don't want to embarrass you. How many of you read it today? We should read it every day for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but we should read it. Oh my Lord, make me brave, brave, and make my path easy for me. Umtaza Khudaome Bara Sabsevatan. This is nationalism, racism. Hamare jaisa koi nahi. And he says, Jo karega imtiyaz rango khum mid jayega. So whosoever will resort to the distinction of color and blood will perish. Turki khargahe ho ya arabi wala gar. Though he may be a majestic Turk or a blue-blooded Arab. This is the law of God. You discriminate on grounds of race, language, color, or riches, you will perish. Come and talk to me like that. Everybody talks about peace. Tony Blair talks about peace. George Bush talks about peace. We're fighting for peace. We're blowing for peace. We're doing this for peace. We want peace. Everyone wants peace. Abdul Rahim Green. That Islam is the only way to establish true peace. Some people say that Bhagwan Rajnish, he's Almighty God. 
Hitler, number one terrorist of human history, he has incinerated six million Jews. We find on the international media there is virulent propaganda about Islam. The first people who were involved in suicide bombing were the Tamil Tigers. There was no case of suicide bombing at all in Iraq. Dr. Zakir Naik. My job is to present truth to the world. Living the faith in the spirit of Islam. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? The concept of jihad. Who are terrorists? Watch Dr. Zakir Naik. Who marry more than one wife. They're labeled as terrorists fundamentalists who spread the religion with the sword. Misconceptions about Islam in Truth Exposed. At least you should read one yuzu every day. One yuzu every day. So by the end of the month you finish it. This is your, you make it your habit. I have to read my book. Otherwise, you know what? The Prophet ﷺ complained to Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, he complained to Allah. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And the messenger said, will say, O oh my Lord, truly my people took this Quran for just foolish nonsense. They deserted it. They neglected it. They don't implement what is inside it. They don't follow what is inside it. They don't read it. And Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he talks about the types of abandonment or deserting the book of Allah, which is known as Hajr. He said in his book, beautiful book, Al-Fawaid, he said types of Hajr, deserting, he said different types of Hajr, Rahimallah. He said the first type I want you to concentrate. He said the first type is abandoning listening to it attentively. You don't listen to the Quran attentively. The Quran is played, okay, the tape is going on, and we are talking, right? So we are not listening to the Quran. So you should listen to the Quran. And the Prophet ﷺ used to ask some of the companions to read the Quran to him. He asked Ibn Umm Abd, Ibn Mas'ud. He said, read to me the Quran. He said, oh Prophet of Allah, the Quran was sent down on you and revealed to you and you want me to read it? He said, I like to hear it from others. I like to hear it from others. You know the Sahaba, what they used to do when they meet, they would make some one of them to read the Quran. Do we do that? When we meet, say to one of the brothers, as Umar used to say, huh? soften our hearts. One of you should read the Quran. We don't do that. But the Sahaba, they used to do that. So the Quran was there in their life. All the time. So the Prophet Sallallahu one night, he passed by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. And Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was praying at night, tahajjud. And he was reading, and he had beautiful voice, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. So the Prophet Sallallahu was listening to him, enjoying listening to Abu Musa. The second day he said to Abu Musa, had you, had you known? Did you know that last night I was listening to you? Oh, mashallah, your voice is so beautiful. Like the voice of Prophet David. 
So beautiful voice you got. You know what Abu Musa said? Had I known, I would have made it better. Better. I would have made, I would have tried my best because you were listening to me. So the Prophet ﷺ used to listen to the Quran from others. So the Ibn Qayyim is saying that, abandoning listening to it. You don't listen to the Quran. You listen to it. And you can have many reciters, mashallah. Hmm? You can listen to this one, you can listen to this one, you can, but you listen to it attentively. So now, if you don't listen, that is a type of hajr, you are deserting the book of Allah. The second thing he said, deserting its rules pertaining to lawful and prohibited. Yes, many Muslims, they read it, mashallah, put it on a high shelf, but they are selling the haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, leave the riba, but they are doing the riba, but they read the book. But they are, because here they have deserted what? Implementing what is inside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is haram. Yes, we know it is haram, but what can we do? It is haram, yes, but what can we do? Subhanallah. Uh, or you will hear, but you know all the people, they are doing it. Imagine. Because all the people are doing haram, so we are doing the haram as well. All the people, they want to go to hell. You want to go to hell? Don't you know that the majority of mankind are destined to Jahannam? The majority of the children of Adam will go to hell? That's what the Prophet ﷺ said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection or the, the day of judgment, he says to Adam, O oh Adam, all the children of Adam in front of him. And he tells him, Allah will tell him, will tell Adam, send to Jahannam those who are destined to hell. You know how many? Can you imagine the number? Out of 1,999 to Jahannam, only one out of 1,000 will go to the Jannah. Can you imagine? So the majority of mankind will go to hell. Do you want to go with them? The majority will never be an evidence that because people, majority are doing it, so it must be right. If you read in the Quran, you will never find a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the majority. In many places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blaming them. Never praise them, the majority. If you obey the majority of mankind, they will lead you astray. So don't use that as an excuse. Allah said, you want to go to the Jannah? So follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Even the whole people are doing the haram. I don't care. They want to go to the Jannah. I don't want to go to hell with them. So that's the second type. The third type, he said, removing it, the Quran, from ruling and judging all the affairs of the Muslims. This is the bitter truth. This is the bitter truth. The Sharia, the book of Allah, has been replaced with what? Man-made laws. English law, American law, French law. So it has been removed from the life of Muslims. And that is what the Prophet ﷺ said 1400 years ago. The first thing Muslims will live is abiding and ruling with the book of Allah. And when did it happen in the life of Muslims? Less than a century. Less than a century only. The fourth type, he said, abandoning, pondering and reflecting on it. Yes, we read it, but we don't ponder upon it. We don't reflect. We don't make tadabbur. We read it in the parrot fashion. Muslims in Ramadan, they compete with one another, right? How many times you made khatma? How many times you finished competing? But do you understand what you are reading? No, parrot fashion, do, 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 like that. No, you should not read the book of Allah like that. 
get translation and your mother tongue try to understand what you are reading that's how your iman will pick up that's how you can strengthen your iman that's how you will enjoy reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last thing Imam ibn al-Qayyim said the Quran is a cure وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَهُوَ شِفَاءُ وَرَحْمَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So it is a cure, a remedy. In this book, the Quran, there is a remedy and cure. If you read it, it is a cure. It will heal you by the leave of Allah. One of the surahs of the Quran, surah number one, Al-Fatiha. This has many names, Al-Fatiha, Al-Hamd, Al-Shafiya, the healer. One of the names of it, Al-Shafiya, the healer. And we know in the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri was in the company of some of the group of the companions. And they came to one of the tribes of the Arabs, and this tribe did not welcome them. They didn't receive them well. So they encamped not far from the dwellings of this tribe. And what happened? What happened? The chief of the tribe was bitten by a snake. Listen to this. He was bitten by a snake. So a woman came to the, to the companions and she said, the chief of the tribe was bitten by a snake. Anyone among you can give him spiritual cure, which we call ruqya, ruqya, spiritual cure. Abu Sa'id said, yes. But we will not do it freely. We will not do it free. She said, we'll give you a flock of sheep. So Abu Sa'id al-Khudri went with her. And what did Abu Sa'id al-Khudri do? You know what he did? The venom of the snake already in his body. The poison already in his body. He started sucking the wound and spitting out the blood. And he was spitting on the wound and he was reading Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, the Shafi'ah. And he read it seven times. After seven times, the man was healed immediately. And they gave them the flock of sheep. And when they reached Medina, they told the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu told them, give me part, my share, give me my share. What is the meaning of the word fundamentalist? The concept of jihad. Who are terrorists? Watch Dr. Zakir Naik. Who marry more than one wife. They are labeled as terrorists, fundamentalists, who spread the religion with the sword. Misconceptions about Islam in Truth Exposed. Muhammad Sallallahu is speaking to people. Ya ayyuhan nas, afshu salam, spread peace. One of the beautiful descriptions of peace, the term salam, is derived from the root verb salima. And they say that anything that is in the state of wholeness, anything that has no deficiency, is to be called that it is in the state of silm or salam. Watch Yasir Fazaga in Here to Hereafter. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Tazneem. My name is Nassim Abdul Rahman. Yeah, my name is Musa Bena. I uh, just recently converted to Islam one and a half years ago. I've been a Muslim now for Ramadan last year. I've been a Muslim for 24 years. And in all that time, I'd never ever come across Islam. I'd never met a Muslim. Um, I was brought up uh, Catholic, Christian. I've never read the Quran, never even heard the Quran being recited. I didn't know anything about Islam. I accepted Islam in my heart. My choice. From ignorance to Islam. This book. This book, people, they should know about it. Our strength is sight. This is the proof. The irrefutable proof. The irrefutable evidence. This Quran chained the Arabs. It's very powerful because it's the word of Allah. If all Muslims hold to this robe of Allah, no power, no force on earth can do anything to us, O oh, Ummah of the Quran.
بصرة فلق دالنت بالناف وكأعظم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam The Quran is a shifa Many of us when we have headache when we have anything what do we do? We rush to the doctor, right? We don't say, let me read on myself. Let me put my hand on the place where I feel the pain. The Prophet ﷺ said that you put your hand on the place of the pain and you say what? أعوذ بعزة الله وقدرته Can you memorize this dua? أعوذ بعزة الله وقدرته من شر ما أجد وأحاذ which means I seek refuge and protection in Allah's power and might from what I suffer, what I feel, what I'm going through just put your hand in that place and say this dua three times and it will just go like that if it is coming from your heart of course because the Quran is a shifa everyone knows the Fatiha may God forbid May God forbid that this never happens. Now, what happens? We don't want it to happen. That someone is bitten by a snake and they bring him here and say, Oh, Sheikh, come read. What do you think? Inshallah, Allah doesn't expose me. Yeah? Maybe he will die in front of me. Huh? Why? Because we'll be reading it just like that. Not from the, not from the heart. But when Abu Sa'id read it, MashaAllah. The man after seven times was healed just like that. So this is the Quran. Shifa. We should not desert it. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept our deeds and your deeds. May Allah Azza wa Jal increase our knowledge and your knowledge. May Allah protect you. Amen. Marakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We have a question and answer session. Uh, there's a question from the sisters. We'll just take this. Whoever Allah guides and whoever Allah misguides, or it should be, does not guide, leaves to go astray. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa sallatu wa ala rasulullah wa ala ala sahbihi wa ala. The issue of the Qadr, it has been addressed by the scholars, Muslim scholars. And the answer is there. The components of Qadr or the integrals of Qadr, right, knowledge, writing, will, and creation. These are the four components that constitute the Qadr. If you understand them all together, then the Qadr issue, inshallah, will be clear in your mind. No Muslim will argue about the knowledge of Allah. Truly, a true Muslim. So Allah knows everything. Of course, apart from these deviant groups. If Allah doesn't know everything, what we do, that means he is ignorant. Can you attribute ignorance to Allah? Never. So he knows. Because he is the creator. He is your maker, and that is rational. When I made this, I know about it. That's how I made it. So I have to know. Otherwise, I will not be able to make it in the first place. So knowledge is essential. And because I know these things, that's what Allah said. Based on his divine knowledge, he commanded the pen to write. And that is the writing. And the writing of the Almighty Allah 
has nothing to do will never interfere in your choice it will never interfere in your choice because Allah's writing which is in the Loh Mahfuz the preserved tablet it is unknown to you anyone saw the preserved tablet anyone read it no one and that writing will not be used against you Allah will not on that day say you'll go to hell because I knew not because I wrote he will not use that writing there is another writing which will be used against you you know there was a writing in the Loh al Mahfud. they were writing when you were, you were in your mother's womb and there's another writing when you reach the age of maturity that writing will be used against you will be identical the same as the example of the headmaster or the, the, the principal. The principal came and he asked the teacher, what do you think, what do you expect the result? He said, this guy is smart, he's getting A, distinction, C, C plus, fail. So now the principal said, I trust you. Announce the result without giving them a test. Those whom they failed, he will file a case against them in the court and he will put them, the principal and the teacher behind bar in the jail, right? He would say, sir, I studied. I worked hard. You didn't test me. But now, if the teacher wrote in a piece of paper in the, and put it in the locker, in the drawer, this student is A, this student is B, this is C, this is fail. And the result came the same. Did the writing of the teacher interfere in the failure of the student? Tell me. It didn't interfere. So you failed because you didn't study, right? Similarly, Allah's writing because he knew, that's it. And that writing, he will not be using against it. There is another writing here on this day. The result, your piece of favor came exactly as he predicted. There is another writing which the angel will write it after you do it, after committing that deed. That's why in the Day of Judgment, to a paper will be given to you. Iqra kitabak. Read your book. Is there any mistake? Did the angel write anything that you didn't do? And you know what the kuffar would say? مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَجِدُ مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا why how amazing this book there is nothing that we didn't do except that it is jotted recorded then no one will say this thing i didn't do no you did it you drank alcohol in day so and so at time so and so you committed zina at this time and you have to confess and the amazing thing about people we never found a person using the writing to justify his doing or his acts of righteousness. No one would say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, we, we prayed Maghrib, it is Maktub. Have you heard this? Have you heard the Muslim say, Alhamdulillah, I prayed Maghrib, it is written, which is true. You will find people using the writing as excuse only. When they do something wrong, you know what I can do, it is written. To justify their mistakes only. No one will say it is written, that's why I prayed Maghrib. It is written, that's why I, I read the Quran. It is written. So it is uh, the nature of man to find a scapegoat. To find a, a way out to justify his drawbacks. Okay? Now, the components, the will of God. If we say the will of man is independent of God's will, do you know what does it mean? That means I can do things against his will. And if you do things against his will, what does it mean? Tell me. He's weak. It means he's what? He's weak. That's why one of the Mu'tazira, one big towering figure, and he was pious, righteous. A Bedouin, you know the Bedouin? Those who they lived in the desert, he came and he tied his she camel by a column, a pillar, 
and he went inside the masjid and the thieves came and took the camel. So he came to the sheikh and said, Oh sheikh, please pray to Allah that uh, I get back my camel. So you know what the sheikh said? He's one of the Mu'tazila. The brother is impressed by them it seems. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, listen now. He said, Oh Allah, Allahumma innaka lam tasha li naqati fulan an tusraq faruddha alay. He said, Oh Allah, you did not will. Listen. You did not will for the she camel of so-and-so to be stolen, so please bring it back. You did not will that to happen. The Bedouin said, what a horrible sheikh you are. You are a stupid sheikh. You are very stupid sheikh. Now my camel, I will never have it again. I will never see my camel again. He said, how? He said, listen sheikh, do you know what is coming out of your head? You said, oh Allah, you did not will my camel to be stolen, right? He said, yes. Not a single African tribe ever worshipped images before the white man came. Not one. They all worship God. Different, different name, but the concept, same. Islamic, Islamic, Islamic. He's a Muslim. He doesn't know. He's got the wrong label on. The Christian has Christianized him and make them to worship Jesus Christ. We have done nothing. Really. No mission is impossible. Watch Ahmad Didad. Love of life. Fear of death. From the worship of men to the worship of Allah. Abdul Rahim Green. Islam was not spread at the point of a sword. Conversions were not made at the point of the sword. People heard and saw Islam and they embraced it willingly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is Firdaus. Yusuf Chambers. What life actually means. What I was doing in this world. Come from a Buddhist family. I've gone through Buddhism. I also went through Hinduism. I went through socialism. None of them gave me the answer. None of them gave me the answer. The debate between Sheikh Ahmad Dad and Jimmy Swagga. Two years down the road becoming a Muslim. That is my turning point of my life. I believe that uh, the Quran can answer my problems. I go by myself to every club. Now that I'm a Muslim, I ask him for a new way of life and Alhamdulillah, that's why I came to Islam. My choice from ignorance to Islam. So he came to the Sheikh and said, Oh Sheikh, please pray to Allah that uh, I get back my camel. So you know what the Sheikh said? He's one of the Mu'tazila. The brother is impressed by them, it seems. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, listen now. He said, O oh Allah, Allahumma innaka lam tasha li naqati fulan an tusraq faruddha alay. He said, O oh Allah, you did not will, listen, you did not will for the she camel of so and so to be stolen, so please bring it back. You did not will that to happen. The Bedouin said, What a horrible sheikh you are. You are a stupid sheikh. You are very stupid sheikh. Now my camel, I will never have it again. I will never see my camel again. He said, how? He said, listen, Sheikh, do you know what is coming out of your head? You said, oh Allah, you did not will my camel to be stolen, right? He said, yes. So he didn't will it, will for my camel to be stolen, and someone took it against his will. And he couldn't stop it, right? Now he wants to bring it back. He cannot, when he failed to, to protect it in the first place. He failed to protect it in the first place. How can he bring it back? And this Mu'tazili, he dropped. <laughs> no answer. You know the man, the answer from the man was fitra. Fitra. Because the Mu'tazila, the will, they understand it is only one will. And I'm sure the Sheikh mentioned two wills yesterday. The universal will and the legal will. Things they happen on this world with God's will. Nothing against his will at all, but either legally or universally. The universal will, which is irada kauniya, this may be something he doesn't like. And maybe you ask, why does he allow it? There is a wisdom behind that. 
There is a wisdom. Imagine no germs, no microbes. Will be there medicine and doctors? Tell me. No, we don't need them. <laughs> we don't need the doctors if there are no germs, no viruses. No need. So they should be there, right? So we have schools, we have medicines, we have laboratories, we have everything. He will only ask you when you have a choice. He told you, come to the masjid. You know, if someone holds the gun and put it on my head, say, bow down in front of this idol, and I did like this. You know, he will never ask me. And I will not be held accountable in front of Allah. You know this? Because I didn't do it with my free will. Don't you know that Ammar ibn Yasir? Ammar ibn Yasir, they were torturing him, the mushriks. And they say, we will not let you go until you insult Muhammad sallallahu And he insulted Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And he came to the Prophet sallallahu and he cried. He said, tell me when you say that, what, how was your heart? What was inside? He said, don't ask me about that. I only say it by my tongue. To say, because I couldn't endure the torture. You know what the Prophet sallallahu said? In Aad fa'ud. If they torture you again, and there was no way to escape by, except by insulting me, do so. You understand now? So Allah will not hold you accountable unless you do something by choice. Not under compulsion. I remember one year, Sheikh bin Uthaymeen is one of the scholars who passed away. Sheikh bin Baz, Sheikh bin Uthaymeen in the, king, in the kingdom of Sheikh Albani, rahimahullah, all of them. A man came and said, Sheikh, my wife, listen sisters, don't do this. He said, my wife locked the door. We are living in a remote area. And she locked the door and said, I will not open until you divorce me. Give me talaq, otherwise I will not open the door. I will leave you rot inside. Remote area, okay? No water, nothing. I will leave you inside until you die. Give me my talaq. I want to hear it. What to do? He gave the talaq. He came to the sheikh and said, what should I do? He said, the talaq is invalid. It didn't happen at all. Because you were under compulsion. No talaq happened. Second thing, one of the components, the third component is the creation. The creation. Allah is the creator. Listen, brother, to the Mu'tazila. You know what the Mu'tazila said? Man creates his own actions. Listen to this now. I'm throwing the pen. This is an action, isn't it? I'm throwing the pen. This is an action. The Mu'tazila is saying, I created this action. Say, well, let us analyze it. Let us discuss what you are saying. What is an action? An action constitute of four components. Will. I decided to throw it. So the will. I made up my mind. Second thing strength have the strength to carry it third component time fourth component place these four components together constitute what action which one i created did i create the will come who created it god almighty allah did i create the strength in the muscle who created it? Come on. Brother, who? Say it. I want it to come out. No, no, this one. Who created it? Allah. Who created time? Who created place? So who created the action? Allah. Man did not create the action. The question now. So what did man do? Man used the created strength and the created will to perform that action that's what he used and I will be held accountable in front of him if I misuse this strength or if I use my will to do something that displeases him so nothing happens in the kingdom of God of Allah that he doesn't know about it nothing happens against his will and he is the one who created everything so everything is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the issue of writing, I'm sure the hadith mentioned expanding the lifespan, right? If you do good deeds, that will expand your lifespan. So your question, how it will expand my lifespan? 
the scholars, they say this thing. They said Allah has set for human beings two limits. Two limits. Minimum and maximum. And this is un unknown to you. You don't know it. It is unknown to you. So if I do good deeds and I be nice to my family, I be nice to this, I will reach the maximum. And it is unknown. Bear that in mind. If I don't do this, if I cut relation with my relatives, I will only have the minimum. It's not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later go and changes. It's already finalized. But it's up to you now. You don't know whether you reach the minimum or the maximum. Work hard. Do the good deeds if you want to reach the maximum. Because the hadith, the hadith of the Prophet they explain one another. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, they explain one another. The wife of the Prophet ﷺ, she said, Allahumma atil umra abi, abi Sufyan wa akhi Muawiyah. One of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. She said, Oh Allah, extend and expand the lifespan of the lifespan of my father and my brother. The Prophet ﷺ told her, uh, Umm Habiba, he said, you asked something which you already finalized. He wanted to correct her that don't think so now, Allah will change what has written already. So that is one hadith explaining that whatever Allah decided, it's already there. It's not something, that's why you find many Muslims on 15th of Sha'ban. They do that. Oh Allah, if you wrote in the preserved tablet that I am going to help, please change it. They do this, Muslims. This shows that they don't understand. Everything has been finalized, everything has been set. Wrote, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew it. And then the other hadith says, it will be expanded. So is there any contradiction? No, no contradiction. It's not contradiction. Don't you know that the Prophet sallallahu said, Nothing stops the qadr from coming down except the dua. What stops the qadr from coming down? Only the dua. Now is the dua, isn't the dua part of the qadr and qadr? It is part of it. I don't know what is going to happen to me tomorrow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the ability and the strength to make dua at this time. Oh Allah grant me health, oh Allah, save me, oh Allah, do this. I'm making dua. So this dua is going up. Okay? This is what I'm saying. This is something hidden. You don't know it. The writing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wrote things in the qadr, in the preserved tablets, because he knew this is going to happen. He knew that this is going to happen. But he did not force you to do this. You have to understand the difference. Allah's writing is not forcing you to do it. It's based on the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will be rewarded according to your actions, what you do. But at the end of the day, it is hidden. You don't know it. That's why Umar said, I carry, I'm always preoccupied only by the dua. Because I know I'm, going, I'm a gainer anyhow, whether this dua is responded to here in this life or uh, in the second life. So the qadr, also on top of that is the secret of Allah and that's why the Prophet ﷺ said you should not go into great depth why because then the shaitan tries to to utilize this and try to create doubts because you have to understand that Allah is adil and just so no one will enter the hellfire when he have any excuse no one so all these people when they enter the, the hellfire they know they, they deserve the hellfire. They know it. Because they are going to hellfire because they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Bil